welcome back to my channel. Hi, thanks for having me on your channel. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Baby bear. <laughs> uh, so today we're gonna do like a life update slash story time. Talk about just for a minute while we move to Nashville because I swear to God we get asked that every single time we go yep. live and it would be nice to just be like go watch this video and we, we tell you everything there you go <clears throat> and then also coming up like we're recording this on Friday the 13th by the way but on September 23rd yep. that's our official uh, we call it guacamole day yep. because the first time that we met we made guacamole coat. So we get asked that a lot too. How did you guys meet? And so we're gonna talk about that and kind of give you a little backstory on yeah. each of us <clears throat> and then make guacamole. This is why we don't celebrate World Guacamole Day. We celebrate Kim and Misha Guacamole Day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, this is an interesting story. You're gonna to wanna to watch yeah. this. Otherwise. So, yeah, yeah. that's okay. good. Okay, that's good. Is that better? Yeah. You can see my head now? Yeah. Okay, okay, so... <laughs> Sorry I'm so tall. Whatever. Sorry I'm so short. So, what okay, were we talking so, about? So, alright, so those of you who already know the very funny burn down, some of you may not know that. So, March 25th, I think. April. The, no, it was March. March was yeah. it? He, like, he kind of blocks it out. But uh, the clinic burned down, and we've been in transition for the past... Six, oh my god, yeah. six months um, <clears throat> with the insurance and trying to figure out what we're going to do. And so, a few weeks ago, well, I guess about a month ago, we decided that we weren't going to rebuild in Bitten County. And we already kind of had been looking at apartments because I'm pregnant <laughs> and my midwife is in Nashville. And so, we we're going to get an apartment, anyways, so that I could be close to the midwife and not have to drive an hour and a half when I went into labor. And then things just kind of fell into place. We had some business opportunities come in. And so we decided this is where was best for us to be with be in Nashville. Yep. So we got this apartment um, and now we're here. And we're, here. we're having a good time. I yeah, think. so far so, so good. Yeah, I really love Our it. Our internet is really good. <laughs> because we lived in the boonies in a little EV town called Holiday and we literally only had internet off of our phones. We were using hotspots yep. off of seven phones yeah, because we <laughs> when you do as many things as we do online, you run through that data pretty quickly. Yeah. So, I'd be like, yeah. where's the other phone that still has data? She'd yeah, like, exactly. She'd be hiding it from me. Yeah, we fought over data. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Data wars. Well, those, you know, first world problems, I know. So we're looking to find him a spot in Nashville to maybe see if, you know, some concierge type client, something like that, but we haven't found anything yet, but we're in transition. Yep. So that's up to speed on why we moved to Nashville. Now yes. let's talk about... Now let's talk about okay. how Misha met Ken. <laughs> Do you want to start with your version <clears throat> or me start with my version? You start with your version. Okay. So basically he had been sending me Facebook messages for a few years and yeah, months or uh, years yeah, yeah maybe maybe years but probably whatever months. <laughs> and i had literally never even responded to him not even it was all one-sided conversation when you clicked on the facebook messenger app yep. and what's really funny about how we met is that we've been accused of being in cahoots already yeah. by significant others in the past and so on both sides on both sides like my significant other and his and uh, we had never even talked to each other. Yeah, never ever. met, never talked. Not never, even like, yeah. even though we live in the same town, we work in the same type, you know, we're both in healthcare, I was a nurse, he was a doctor, and his kids were, or his stepkids had my mom as a teacher, like we still, our paths had never crossed, but nobody believed us apparently. Yep. <laughs> and uh, so for me, I'm a very spiteful person. <laughs> and so, one morning, I sent a <laughs> hi, smiley face, and it was perfectly timed. And I knew that if I was persistent, that <laughs> I would hit that right time sometime in the future. Yeah, so he, he hit it at the right time because I was like, oh, well, I've been accused of talking to him. I might as well, you know, say hi. 
And I'm also a serial entrepreneur, and so I had this idea of uh, a long-term care facility because I've, I've worked in nursing homes almost my entire nursing career. Up until the past four years, I was a labor delivery nurse, but pretty much everything before that was long-term care. And so I have a really strong passion for um, the older people and geriatrics, and I really wanted to provide a place where they can have good quality care and activities and all that kind of stuff. Anyways, I thought he might help me with that. Well, that was my excuse. Anyways. That's a good one. It was a good, a good excuse. I mean, it was both. It yep. was like I was being mean and spiteful, <clears throat> but also right. I was, you know, well, here's a business opportunity, maybe. And so, I didn't, I still wouldn't like go to his house. I would just talk to him. So we chatted on Facebook Messenger for months. Uh -huh. I don't even know how many months. We'd have to look back because we still have all the messages saved. Oh, yeah. There are tens of thousands <laughs> of messages where we would talk, chat, and then she'd ghost me for a few days, and I was like, it's okay, you'll be back. He's such a turd. <laughs> and, uh, but that, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with your version of the story. That's, that's yeah. pretty much the truth of it. I have no qualms about admitting that I was stalking you on Facebook. But what's really funny about the story is that even though we had never met, never talked, we had always kind of been in orbit <laughs> around each other. Yeah, we've been drawn to each other. For years in and years. Weird, yeah, weird yeah, way. yeah, very weird. And we didn't neither of us knew that the other felt that way mm -hmm. until we started talking and, and finally fessed up. Like actually I've kind of had my eye on you for a, a long damn time. We didn't fess that up till. Yeah, that was well, a while. Well, maybe you did, but I didn't. Yeah, that was, that was a while. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. But, <clears throat> okay, so we talked on Facebook for a while. Yeah. And, and yeah. then I went on a cruise. To and, Mexico. To Mexico in a hurricane. And he was quite concerned about me. Yeah. But I got him a t-shirt. The I'm hurricane sure was that? It wasn't a big one. Yeah. It was like a category three or something. <clears throat> right. But I got him a t-shirt, which I'm pretty sure his girlfriend threw away. Yes. Because he had did. a girlfriend, which was fine with me because I wasn't interested in dating him. I was just being a spiteful old turd <laughs> and talking to him. So I was like, hey, I got you a t-shirt. I don't, it said something about being a doctor. I can't I remember. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Trust me, I'm a doctor. Like and it had like a ball. I don't know. It was stupid. It was like $2. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. And calls them out. <laughs> uh, so I was like, all right, you t-shirt. Yeah. I'll bring it to you one day. And right. then I was at an ex-friend's house. She's no longer my friend. <laughs> I feel that's important to say. And he said, hey, I'm making guacamole. Do you want to come over? And I said, okay. Yeah. And so that How are you going to turn down and homemade guacamole? Homemade guacamole, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I get there and then yeah. I thought the guacamole was already in the No, day. no, tell them about the before you pulled in the oh, driveway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he had quite the reputation as being um, yeah. scandalous. Scoundrel. Um, yeah, he was the Brett Butler of our town, basically. Like, he, he's not. Yeah. He, you know, you don't want to date him. <laughs> right. <laughs> publicly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I live right down the road from him. Well, my parents. I was staying with my parents. So for years, we were literally seven miles apart. Not even seven miles. Yeah. And just <laughs> never had crossed paths. Yeah. So. Except in our hearts. <laughs> so I'm in my little Cavalier Gator and I literally stop at the end of his driveway and talk to myself because I've had a history of making poor decisions <laughs> when it comes to guys. And so I was very self-aware at this point and very, um, took this all very seriously. Like, yeah. here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm not going to do. You set and your boundaries. I set very clear boundaries and I, I set two of them. Which, uh, Barry girls and other young ladies out there, that's actually an excellent <laughs> plan. If you're about to go into a scoundrel's house or on a date with a scoundrel, set your boundaries in advance. I love that. That's great. Yeah. So I set my boundaries in advance. And uh, I literally sat there and I was like, this is just hanging out. Nothing else is happening. I don't care how many glasses of wine you have. I had a lot of glasses of wine, but nothing, nothing happened. We just hung out. Right. I sniffed his books. Yes. <clears throat> That's when I truly fell in love is when she pulled one of my old books off the shelf 
and sniffed it. And I was like, oh, you'll do. Okay. You literally said you'll do. I just like the way old books smell. If you if you like old books, then you know what I'm talking about. And he has, so when I started, his house was a wreck. He looked like a hoarder. There was just literally books yeah. on the floor, books everywhere. And I mean, Definitely was, a bachelor pad. Yeah, and that was fine. Intellectual bachelor. At least he had books yeah. as opposed to garbage. You know? <clears throat> Beer cans. Beer cans, yeah. Crack pipes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, we hung out, kind of got to know each other a little bit, made guacamole. And so she was anticipating that she would arrive and eat the guacamole. Right. But the plan was, this is, this is how devious I am, we were going to make guacamole together. That was my plan. And so I had all the stuff kind of laid out like I do now. And uh, so I, I handed her a fork. And I'm like, here, you can smush the avocados. He put me to work. Yeah, put her to work right off the bat. Which guys out there, that's an excellent strategy. Don't don't take her to dinner. Make dinner together. It's a great strategy. And which is, but the funny thing is, like we, that's what we did forever. Still do. Yeah, we still yeah. do. Yeah. But we almost never went out to eat. Well, first of all, there's nowhere to go out to eat yeah. in the area that we were living in. Plus, we were both financially. <sighs> we were pretty broke. Broke as a joke, pretty much. Yeah. And um, so yeah. So we were just friends, like I said, for months, months yeah. until he broke up with, or she broke up with him, I can't remember. Somebody broke up with somebody. Somebody broke up with somebody. I was already single, but I was planning to be single for quite a long time because I had too many crazy boyfriends. Like, yeah. And when I say crazy, I'm not being dramatic. They were legitimately cuckoo kachu needed to be on medications crazy they're all medications at this time but they weren't <laughs> when i dated them so i missed that boat so i was taking a break and and he was funny and smart and I, I, in in the small town that we lived in nobody really was funny or smart so it was nice to be able to have somebody to talk to about intelligent things and have a good conversation same for me by the way um conversation on the typical date was not that intellectually stimulating. And so to find a beautiful woman <clears throat> who appreciated the smell of old books, <laughs> who liked to drink wine, but not too much, and who liked to talk about actually intellectually stimulating things was a rare find for me. Uh, it was it was um, exactly what I had pictured her as being in my head. Really? Oh yeah, yeah that's, you were awesome in my dreams. Uh, and then you turned out to be pretty darn awesome Aww. in real life. He's much cuter in person than I. Oh I yeah, let's talk about that. Yeah, when he walk, when I walked in, I was like, oh man, he's more attractive than I thought he was gonna be. Because I'm like, I hadn't seen him in a long time. Yeah. And I guess he was on Facebook, but it was. Yeah, Older pictures. Yeah, I didn't post pictures of myself. And uh, I was also transitioning from paleo to keto about that same time. And so that the, the pooch that I had had <laughs> was going away. And, yeah. and so the, the chubby cheeks, the inflammation, all that stuff was getting better because of keto. And so when she walked in, she was kind of blown away by my new keto self. Yeah, because I, okay, so how long had you been in that area? When did you move to Camden? I moved to Camden in 2002-ish. So I've yeah. known about him for like 10-ish years. Ten, about 10 years, 11 years. And yeah. when he first moved to town, all the women were like talking about the new doctor. Okay, it's a really small town and we don't have a lot of doctors. So he was True. the ER doctor and then yeah. he married one of the nurses and everybody so he was around people because she had kids and so he was at the school a lot and everybody would be like oh he's so hot and i had literally did not see him i don't think until you were pretty chubby yeah and so by the time he got into my vision i was like i don't know what all the fuss is about and he's yeah. fat <laughs> and that's about the time that i was talking about on other videos on my channel and facebook that I was a very fat, unhealthy doctor. Um, at one point, I got up to 297 pounds, was pre-diabetic, had all these medical issues going on, and I'm the doctor. I'm supposed to be telling you how to be healthy, and I was sick as a dog. Right. And so that's the, kind of the, the Dr. Barry she had been seeing on you know my social media posts. And so even despite me being fat and, and, and not 
you know, whatever, you were still like, I don't know, there's something oh, about that so guy. <laughs> I, I am weird. But like, you know, in a good way. And uh, so he got divorced and then he was kind of like ostracized by everyone in our community. Yeah. I can't wait for everybody in our community no, to watch no, this. No, 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 it's <laughs> but hey, you know, we're just telling the truth. So. <laughs> so he was blacklisted basically. And so at events, like, um, like great pretenders and the Fiddler Shimmery, these like local events or whatever. Ball games. Ball games yeah. that I would be at with whoever I was with. He would sit by himself. Always. He would always be by himself. He would always, <laughs> he would be like on the opposite side as everybody else. It was just, I was like, what is up with this guy? How come he never talks to anybody? Yeah. Why is he always by himself? Why does he sit by himself? Because, I don't know, I just thought, surely there's got to be somebody that, you know, he still talks to, but I guess not. Yeah. I don't know. It was weird. Yeah. Another great life lesson. Embrace your weirdness. Embrace your uniqueness. Don't think you have to fit in with, with the crowd. You don't. Just be yourself. Because there's somebody out there that's looking for that you, not yeah. the fake you yeah. that you portray. Don't don't do that. That's true. Just be you. And so I was. I had been kind of blacklisted by the society there because of this divorce, and uh, she had she had kind of been the hometown girl, and so everybody chose her side, which is fine. I don't blame them for doing that. Yeah, he kind of deserved it a little. I bit. did. I did. I was a dog. I deserved it, and so I just went. And, I I basically placed myself in the corner. Yeah. That's what I did. So I was sitting in the corner. That's what you were seeing. Yeah. Yeah. I would literally just sit across and like stare at him. Here what is, is he doing? Now the truth is coming what out. What does he think? I just wanted to know what was going through your mind. <laughs> and if she yeah. don't even know. But I know because his daughter was at these events and that's why he was there to support her. But it was still like, I don't know. I don't know. It was just, he was yeah. Um, he was doing all this on purpose, and, I'm sure. To no, not out. at all. And I, I was basically going through a self transformation phase. That's true. I was trying because I had made some egregious mistakes in my past, yeah. socially and uh, emotionally, financially. and relationship and financially. Yeah. And and I was, you know, I was a grown man by this time, and I was like, dude, you got to get your house in order. What's wrong with you? You can't blame this on every girl you've dated and, and married, and yeah, you can't blame this. Yeah, it, maybe it's time to look in the mirror. And so, basically, I moved to a little cabin by the Tennessee River and lived there for a year alone, and and just basically was a uh, what would you not a eunuch, but just like I was, no, not a eunuch. Not a eunuch. I was just like literally, I'm not going to date anybody. I'm not going to have a relationship. I'm not going to do any of that. And that I, I sort of stuck to that. No, sort of. Nice. For me, I really stuck to it very <laughs> tightly, but other people may say I didn't stick to it that tightly. Uh, but I was basically trying to remake me into the guy that I wanted to be. And so I don't even know how many books I read on self improvement, self help, stoicism, how to you know live your best life, how to be honest, be true, be the real you. Mm -hmm. And I basically had to go back to school and relearn how to be a good, um, honest, reliable gentleman. And he still didn't learn everything. I did not. No, he not. learned a lot. The I learned last a lot, though. Six yeah. years because he. <laughs> I have a very good mirror, <laughs> mm -hmm. and so just because he knows something. Doesn't mean he was actually implementing those mm -hmm. things true, properly. True, true. Yeah, you could maybe. I was almost like an idiot savant. I, I would know how to do something, but I didn't understand it. Does that make sense? Like I would know, oh, I'm supposed to do this and this in that situation. Right, but he didn't understand why or how to do this. <laughs> how to actually implement it? Yeah. He would just be like, I know I shouldn't lie. So I'm going to omit. <laughs> I'm just not going to tell. Instead yeah. of yeah. lie. <laughs> but I'm not stupid. Yeah, and very so smart. didn't really work very well yeah. with me for very long. And, anyway. and something that really made us who we are as a couple and saved us as a couple is that she got me in a way that nobody else has ever got me. 
Like she literally could just open up, she could raise my hood and fiddle around and be like, no, you're full of crap on this, this, and this, and you need to do this, and you need to stop doing that, and you think I don't know about this, but I totally do. <laughs> and so she... <laughs> I was really, I would like find something out. Yeah. And then I would put him on the spot and I would say, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Yep. And you need to tell me the truth. And he would still lie. And I'll be like, I literally know. I know. And what what the hell is wrong with you? Yep. But and why so did you do that? I always told the truth, but it sometimes took a few days. It took oh, or a few weeks. A few days and some fights and yeah, 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 me yeah. literally like yeah. pulling out evidence yes, and being yeah. like, I'm not stupid. But I'm I, not somebody, I don't know who you think you're dealing with, but I'm yeah. not the one. And you get your shit together. No, that's totally true. And but I think it, uh, that's that's why I'm, I said earlier you got to be you and be the true you because if I had been if I if I was being fake with her, this would have never worked. Yeah. Because no, she I, knew even though I was had been dishonest or I had done something stupid, she still knew I was trying and that I was yeah. honestly trying. And and so that's that saved us more than one occasion. Well, I think too you were more afraid that if you told me the truth that that would just be it. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Because I am kind of one of those hard-nosed people. Yeah. But, like, I want what I want and if I don't get what I want, then I'm going to throw a hissy fit. Yeah. She's, an, I'm an only child. <laughs> yeah, we're only children. And she is truly an only child. And I'm, I, I, have, I have brothers, but we didn't grow up together. Right. And so I'm effectively an only child. So you can imagine these two only children both wanting to get their way. <laughs> yeah. So weird though. I don't understand exactly what happened or what changed, but we fought God. For the first two and a half years we fought yeah. probably every other day. Almost, yeah. And if we weren't fighting, we were <clears throat> deep fuming about fighting. Yeah. And uh I don't know. Just, or I was mad because you had got mad about something. Or, he was, yeah, he was mad. He would get mad at me for being mad about something that I had a right to be mad about. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. And so, I don't know. I think we had one argument one time, and I was like, this is stupid. This is stupid. I don't know why you're acting like you're going to give a crap about this tomorrow. You're not. You're not going anywhere. You still love me. You're going to love me tomorrow. So, I don't know why we're fighting. This is wasted. This is a waste of our time. No, that's perfectly accurate. And, I, and it, that just hit me really deeply. I was like, yeah, she's right about that. Uh, this is this is in the big picture meaningless, mm -hmm. and I'm mad about nothing. And yeah, I'm totally gonna love her tomorrow on the next day. Yeah. And so this, I was, and and you remember that? I was just like, no, you're right. And when, yeah, and for the just, first time ever, he just stopped talking. Yeah. He's ne and, and, Which is rare. Right. If he can stop talking, but like give me this bullshit look. I, which would make know. me like fume even hotter, <laughs> and he knew that. But this one was like a, huh, like a. Anybody else get that look at home? You're like, I, oh. you're saying a lot. But I, but then, I, also, it was like, I don't like that you're right right now, but you're right. Yeah, so I, I don't want to tell you you're right, and, and I'm not going to well, you did the next yeah, day. Yeah, the next day, I'm like, oh, you're right. Yeah, that's totally yeah. right. Yeah. So, we kind of like started this whole, see the big picture. Yeah. If this is not going to change the way we love each other, then we're not wasting time on it. Right. Um, right, if, it if it's it. not going to make me leave you and it's not hurting anyone and we're not going to fight about it. And I think it set a very <coughs> clear example in our relationship. And since that day, both of us, she'll just be like, no, you're right. I'm, I don't know why I'm, uh, this is dumb. Yeah. And just we'll just literally fess up. I don't know. This well, is dumb. I shouldn't have. Well, even if I'm upset, I'll be like, I know <clears> that this is irrational, and I know that this doesn't matter, but I'm upset about it. Yeah. And I just need you to know that I'm a little mad right now, but I'll I'll be okay. Yeah. But we've been able to do that for years, and I think that's a, a huge secret to a good, healthy relationship. Is if you're wrong, shut the hell up. It's okay to to just say okay, because you don't lose the argument. You win. Yeah. If you say, no, you're right. I was um, wrong about that. And everybody wins if you just stop fighting, honestly. Right. But that kind of ends the fight when you say, no, you're right. Yeah. I'm wrong about this. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, what do you, what's the other person going to say? I mean, they can rub it in for a minute or two, but mm -hmm. that's kind of the end of the thunderstorm at that point. Yeah. It takes all <laughs> the, you know, 
Yeah. And I think some people may like fighting. Yeah. Honestly. yeah. We really don't, but we had to get some ground rules situated yeah well we I, had been with so many people prior to being with each other that did enjoy fighting i yeah, think that we yeah, just expected yeah. that that's how it was going to be yeah. that we were going to have to fight because yeah. that's what we were used to coming from other relationships right. where that was yeah. the normal yeah and i hate fighting and i think you hate fighting yeah but we've both been in so many terrible relationships where fighting was the normal that when you would start you know, get upset, I'd be like, oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah. And then you're probably the same way, like, yeah. oh, yeah, back to the same old, same old, and here I am stuck in this again. Yeah. But then at that day, or the next day when I fessed up, I'm like, no, you're right, you're right, mm -hmm. you're right. this is not gonna be any And much. we literally have not really fought, no. I think maybe one time, one time since then. For like two hours or something. But as far as day long fights or, not speaking for days on end that never ever happens yeah. because we're both we know we've got that safe space to say you're right this is stupid yeah. and nobody's going to make fun of you and so that that's been a beautiful safety valve mm -hmm. for the relationship yeah okay so how are we doing here you so got the lemon put the limes you got the lime. lemons so <laughs> we put, um, I, was told, lime I was told i was told by someone who should know years ago that lemons and limes were the same thing that a lime is just less ripe than a lemon if you let a lime stay on the tree it turns into a lemon i thought that was true and so when she was an idiot yes yeah, yeah she did not know what she was talking about in that respect but so then when we made the keter egg video was that on your channel or mine it it's on my channel uh nisha actually said out loud you know lemons and limes are the same thing and yeah we got hundreds of comments because he had told me that and i thought well he's smarter than me i thought i, would, I thought that was true because i was told by somebody who should know she didn't know she did not know there are two different things so we squeezed i don't know tiny there's about These seven are Meyer's little lemons, itty bitty because that's what they have the Meyer Meyer <laughs> are, there, are there Meyer lemons so these are the kiwi limes no kiwis are even smaller okay so this is a smallish lime i probably did four Limes and you cut up four good size, uh, pretty darn ripe avocados. Yeah, they're very ripe. And um, fun fact on how to find a really good ripe avocado is not only like you feel it, and if it's a little gives a little bit, that's a good indicator. But if that little the where the, the stem the stem is, if that falls off, then they're and then you can press them and if they're a little bit soft but not mushy that's perfect too and you guys all saw how i got the seed out earlier you never do this or you'll wind up in the er talking to a doctor <laughs> like me telling you not to do that anymore do you say a lot of that but, uh, well i i could tell the er story after er story about dumb stuff like that but if you whack it then you can actually turn it and it'll just come right out and then you can you can just whack it against a bowl and there you go, you got your pit out. And we use a whisk to mush up our avocados. That's an odd looking whisk. This is, is a that? French whisk. Oh, French whisk, yeah. okay. And the reason we do that is because we like it chunky. Yeah, we love chunky uh, sauce or uh, guacamole. And that's another thing that kind of bonded us early on is we kind of like the same foods. We like all the same foods. Yeah, we like savory, we like flavorful, we like meaty. Uh, she was not a big dessert person, and so that helped me a lot because I was trying to get off paleo and all the paleo desserts and the, you know, the sweet potato and the quinoa and all of those carbs. And so the fact that she didn't like to have a big hot fudge cake after a dinner, that, was a, that, that helped me a lot. Yeah, I would rather have another uh, dozen oysters. <laughs> She's literally... Well, she, uh, well, I didn't like them when we met. No, I, I introduced her to oysters and she immediately fell in love with raw oysters on the half shell. And so for a while, we just contented ourselves with Blue Point oysters because we didn't know any better. Well, and we didn't live near anyone who had right, anything right, different right. anyway. Was, was the Southern the first place we discovered that there were more than one kind of oyster? Uh -huh. Yeah. And so they had an oyster menu and we had no idea. I thought Blue Point was the only kind of oyster in the world. And so we, we were like, well, what's this one? What's that taste like? And so the waiter was really, really nice and informative. And he told us about it. And we're like, well, let's try a dozen Shigoku. <laughs> And that was it. She was like, holy crap. And I think she ate three dozen Shigoku yeah. at the, at the soda. But now they Nashville. don't have those. They have the Moon, da moon Dancers. Moon Dancers, that that yeah. Like. And that's pretty close. We like a much a smaller, deeper cup. They're sweet, sweet and salty, and tiny. They're not very big. Yeah, and the, if you hate the big, sloppy, it feels like you just swallowed a huge loogie when you eat a Blue Point. 
That's not the only oyster in the world. You just need to go to a little bit better restaurant that has a variety and get a small oyster with a deep cup and then you two will be in love with oysters. Yeah, so if you're coming to Nashville and you wanna go eat at the Southern and you wanna yeah. invite us. Yeah, invite us to the Southern. We'll we'll, we won't split a dozen with you. We'll each have a dozen. Yeah. <laughs> I might have to. She, I, yeah, I, she, yeah. You'll definitely have to. Okay, so. So um, you eat oysters even pregnant? Yes, I do. Let's talk about that. How many dozen oysters have I had since I've been pregnant? Probably 20 dozen. More than that. Yeah. Because yeah. I had, like, little, when we went to Connecticut, I had oysters almost yeah. every night we were there. And then we eat at the Southern all the time. Yeah. When we were coming to doctor's appointments, having to drive, because that would make the drive worth it to go eat. Right. And obstetricians will well meaningly tell pregnant women you should not eat shellfish or, or seafood or any raw anything. And it, that's just not true. It, they, you would think there's a ton of research to support that, but when you look into it, there's actually none. And so we kind of just started, we read some Western Price stuff, and I actually looked into the literature, like where did this come from? And Lily Nichols has a great book. She doesn't recommend oysters in her book either, but she's kind of being on the safe side, I think. I'm right, but she, she does talk about, there's really no research, the, the, you're much more likely as a pregnant woman to get a, a bout of salmonella from a salad than you are from eating undercooked whatever. Fish. Yeah, and yeah. so when pregnant women have this really cool thing right here, it's called a nose. <laughs> and any woman who's been pregnant will tell you that her sense of smell, what does it do? It goes yes. through the roof. Yeah. You can you get much more heightened sense of smell and stuff will revolt you much quicker when you're pregnant. And so sniff the oyster. If it, if it doesn't smell good, don't eat it. The end, that's, that's how we did it 50,000 years ago. Right. Yeah. So I also have eaten some sashimi too. Oh, tons of not sashimi. Not much because I've I'm not a time. big fan of sashimi. Mm, I wish I had some right now. But for a minute there, I was like one hand. Yeah. That's lot. slices of raw fish at a Japanese yeah. restaurant. All right. So the seasoning we are going to put in our guacamole is Redmond's Real Salt. I've got the coarse sea salt here. Um, the organic onion salt. Yum. The organic seasoning salt, and then also the organic garlic. Pepper. So that's what we're going to be using, and this obviously is to taste. We put a lot. Yeah, we love salt. We're not afraid of salt uh, in any way. We prefer salt's good for you. the grinder for guacamole because you kind of get those little chunks when you eat. Yeah. But if you don't, they have the fine salt, which this is like regular grains of salt, but we love flowers. Okay. And so the seasonings, do they also have salt they in do. them? They, they do. do. So like, keep that in mind. Yeah. But we like everything just a little saltier than most people. Also, you're going to notice when you get these type of seasonings that don't have extra crap in them, that they, mm. they stick. But that's a good thing. That means there's no fillers or weird stuff in there because they will put fillers to keep them from yeah. clumping up. Maltodextrin is very that. common. And you don't want that. All you have to do is stir this up a little bit yeah. and then it'll come out just fine. Right. That's real salt. It happens a lot with seasonings. Not and in the winter, salt. that's not going to happen. But in the Nashville summer, yeah, that's going to happen. The humidity is ridiculous here. I'd like to use the bigger ones. I'm going to just use the bigger holes. Nice. What else would you like to talk about? Well... So every year since that day, uh, I actually the, the a year I actually thought that that was a really special night. I want to. How did you remember? Well, I tell I'll tell you how because that's what I'm about to tell oh, okay. you. Okay. So I thought that was an amazing night. Like that was that was by hands down the best first date I'd ever had in yeah. my life. Because we wound up, we ate the guacamole, we drank a lot of wine, we talked about books, we talked about authors, we talked about our business idea, and we were standing over by the bookcase. And do you remember what I told you? I made a prediction. You're gonna have my baby? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 His crazy butt did say that on our first date. First day. Like, You're nuts. <laughs> I was like, okay, we don't have to talk about it, but just wait and see. And so that, I put that out in the universe, the very first day. And so I thought that, that was an amazing time. And did you spend the night? No, but you it was went, like you 2 a.m. Because you were like, just yeah. stay the night. You can stay, have the bed. I'll sleep on the couch. It's a scoundrel. Like, what am I? I don't know. I said, I, I was literally backing out the door and I was like, nope. <laughs> no, no. Not today, no. Satan. <laughs> I 
I said, I'm going home. Yep, she did. That's true. I remember. And so I actually Literally, I, I live like half a mile down the road, by the way. Yeah. And so I put that date in my phone, and I just called it Welcome Holy Day. And, and, and forgot about it. That right, and so literally a year from now, I always, uh, a year from then, I always look at my calendar a few days ahead to see what's coming up, and I was like, "What a moly day!" What was? Oh yeah! And so then I kind of surprised her that next year and made it kind of a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, we went to some Mexican restaurant where they make the guacamole at your table side, or something like that, and so. I was like, happy guacamole day. And she's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, we make guacamole. We happened to be in San Antonio. I think. I think that's where it was. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, we made guacamole a year ago yeah. was for our first date. Yeah. And so this is guacamole day. And so since then, it's been on the calendar and every year we celebrate guacamole day. Right. <clears throat> a lot of people want to know that know him, want to know what my friends and family thought when I was like, I'm dating <laughs> Dr. Barry. Well, how many months did we date before you actually said that out loud to another human? Six. About six <laughs> months, yeah. We, I wouldn't go out in public and came in with him. I was like, we are not dating. We are hanging. We're out. just friends. We're friends. We're friends and business partners. That's what we call ourselves. And I was like, honey, if that's Whatever what you, you need to call, it. to call it, that's fine. Yeah. Then yeah. I got jealous and then I was like, okay. Fine. Fine. So, was so, that your birthday party? My birthday party, my 20s. Seventh birthday, I think. I think so. I think that's right. And we, uh, she had a birthday party at a local establishment <laughs> and invited me. And I'm like, mm, yeah, I'll come. Oh my god! And then <laughs> I didn't tell anyone he was coming. I just was like, mm, if he comes, he comes. It's whatever. <laughs> and so several of the girls. <clears throat> Some older, because I've always hung out with people who are older than me. Like, I don't know. I just get along better with older women. <laughs> like, saw him come through the door and were like, oh my God, Dr. Barry is here. And I was like, yeah, and I invited him. And they were like, what? <laughs> so yeah, I invited them. Yeah. We're friends. And they were like, oh my God. And then my cousin said that he was going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> and then I shouldn't date him. Right. And then my best friend was like, you suck at picking guys. And you're you continuing to suck. Yeah, yeah. This is awful. But then he took me to see my grandparents in San Antonio. And she was like, he's okay. Who he's said that? Beth. Oh, Beth. Yeah. yeah I did she, that. that was like her first. She was like, he must be okay. Because yeah. you haven't got to see your grandparents in a really long time. And for him to want to do that, that's kind of a big deal. And it was a big deal. Yeah, it was an awesome so, trip yeah. too. I, I loved your your people. Yeah, my yeah. tiny people. Your tiny people. <laughs> yeah, Puerto Rican all of them right. come to about here on me. Abuelo, abuelo, abuelo here. yes, here. Abuelo, is here. Abuelo, and then your other people yeah. are here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. respectively. Yeah, <laughs> below here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, except so. your mom. My mom, I don't know. I think she liked you more than my dad. My dad was like. Mm. I'm not getting interested in anybody you're dating. You let me know when you got a ring on your finger, yeah. basically. Yeah, I was surprised that your mom liked me because I just knew she was going to be like, no. Yeah, I think she didn't believe all the mm. stuff that Maybe. everybody said about you. I think she was like, you know, there's two sides to every story, that kind of thing, mm. which there are. There are. There's always two sides. Absolutely. How much onion do you want to put in uh, here? Let's do half that amount. Half this amount? Yeah. Okay. So we don't measure things, by the way. We just throw yeah. things into a bowl. Sorry if that triggers you, but... And guacamole is kind of one of those things that everybody likes differently anyway. So right. Cilantro. Oh, oh, yes. We almost forgot the most important ingredient. Usually we put fresh garlic in here too, but don't we don't have any fresh garlic. No. But you had the garlic so salt, we have so that's better than nothing. Yeah. We love a lot of cilantro, and the, there's like a gene apparently that you yeah, either love cilantro. cilantro or it tastes like soap to you, right? Soap, yeah. Which is really sad. I know, right? This looks exactly like the Pokemon. Mm -hmm. anyway. That's it, yeah. Like. <laughs> and I was like, that's not too chunky for you? And she's like, no, that's the way I like it, actually. I'm like, oh, nice. And, and then remember I taught you to put the, the seed in there? To keep it from turning mm -hmm. brown, which I don't know if I still believe that. but I, I, I've been told by yeah, people I've, who I've been, should know. <laughs> you're right. That, that limes and lemons are the same thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. 
So like I said, we like a lot of cilantro. You don't even have to add cilantro, but we feel it gives it a little more. And cilantro is one of the few things I still grow at, in our garden at the farm because the peacocks won't eat herbs. And so I can still grow basil or basil, uh, cilantro, chives. What else do we grow? Um, rosemary. Rosemary, thyme. Lavender, yeah, because the peacocks, but if you try to grow any kind of succulent or any kind of uh, vegetable or green, they will eat it up like velociraptors. Literally. And so, yes, this is a lot of cilantro. And so you may not want this much or you may not want any, but to me, it's just not guacamole unless the number one flavor is cilantro. What do you think about that? This is going to be a long video. Yeah. <laughs> it's the stems. Yeah, I love the stems. Oh, okay. Makes it chunky. Do you, do you, do people throw away the stems? Well, I just feel like the leaves have the most flavor. Mm, I don't know about that. When you crunch into that stem, mm -hmm. that's pretty amazing. This is organic cilantro. We got this from Whole Foods. Because some cilantro, the cilantro from Walmart, yeah. is, you have to have You like, need four bundles. Yeah, it's awful. It has no flavor whatsoever. Yeah. But this is powerful. Like, it's I can tell good that stuff. it's going to be good because yeah. you can smell it. And some of you guys may know that I, I'm pretty much a carnivore now. I eat a very fatty, meat-heavy diet. I don't eat a lot of veg at all. But this is one of those an, ancestrally, uh, seasonally appropriate things that I, I'm going to eat this guac. Oh, my God. Good. Is it good? Yeah. Excellent. Just wait till we get the rest of this cilantro. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little more salt. Okay. Oh, that's so good. We haven't had good guacamole in a year. <laughs> and if you're saying right now, oh, that's too much salt, that's bad for you, I got YouTube videos on my channel about that. Oh, I know. We had guacamole at Universal City Walk. That duck was really good guacamole. Yeah, that was good too. And we put a little bit of tomato in this. Sometimes we don't put any tomato at all. We're trying to replicate though. But but this is, is, this is yeah. exactly how we made it. This is the, the original guacamole. Yeah, it looks like a <laughs> chunky, mushy salad. We could have used a few more avocados, I think. Yeah, probably. we could have. I could have put less cilantro, but I did not want to. Oh, there it comes. Mmm. Oh my god. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing. I feel. Okay guys, that's it for story time. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you leave a comment, hit that thumb button, subscribe to my channel, subscribe to his channel. Yeah. You know what I'd love to read in the comments is your first date. Yeah. Tell us about your first date, what you did. That'd be awesome to read all about yeah, people. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah, I'd love to read your story of your first date. Okay guys, thanks. We'll see you in the next video. Love you, mean it.